Hello there everybody, Bulbo10,000 here, bringing you episode 8 of Undertale, and in this episode, we're gonna check out the waterfall. But first, we have a few more things we need to do. Let's talk to the characters down here. Yo! Are you sneaking out to see her too? Awesome! She's the coolest, right? I want to be just like her when I grow up. Hey, don't tell my parents I'm here. <laughs> I don't actually remember what voice I gave him before, so that's his voice now. <laughs> This is an echo flower. It repeats the last thing it heard over and over. This is an echo flower. It repeats the last thing it heard over and over. And it sounds again. And su suspiciously, he has snow on the roof of his stand. What? Haven't you seen a guy with two jobs before? Fortunately, two jobs means twice as many legally required breaks. I'm going to Grillby's. Wanna come? Yeah, alright. Well, if you insist. I'll pry myself away from my work. Over here. I know a shortcut. So, you say he knows a shortcut, he really doesn't. <laughs> He's just really teleporty. First shortcut, huh? <laughs> hey, everyone! Hey, Sans. Hi, Sans. Greetings. Lots of hellos. I don't remember any of the voices. But yeah, you get all the dogs here, everyone you spared. Nah, I haven't had breakfast in at least half an hour. You must be thinking of brunch! Uh, here, get comfy. Oh, the freaking whoopee. I forgot that. Whoops, watch where you sit down. Sometimes weirdos put whoopee cushions on the seats. Anyway, let's order. What do you want? So, fries or a burger? This is a really important decision, guys. This is going to affect the ending of the game. I'm going with burger. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Grillby, we'll have double order a burg. What's Sans doing? What's he rubbing his head with? So, uh, what do you think? Uh, my brother. Cool or uncool? Say cool if you want to be on Sans' real good side. Of course he's cool. You'd be cool too if you wore that outfit every day. He'd only take that thing off if he absolutely had to. Oh well, at least he washes it. And by that, I mean he wears it in the shower. Thank you, Grillby. Here comes the grub. Want some ketchup? No thanks. Uh, if you say no, he'll drink it. If you say yes, you'll spill it on yourself. Bon appetit! Ah! Sans! You tip the ketchup. The cap falls off and all the ketchup in the bottle pours onto your food. Whoops. Uh, f forget about it. You can have mine. I'm not hungry anyway. Oh, that is charming, Sans. Anyway, cool or not, you have to agree, Papa. I Papyrus tries real hard. Like how he keeps trying to be part of the Royal Guard. One day, he went to the house of the head of the Royal Guard and begged her to let him be in it. Of course, she shut the door on him because it was midnight. But the next day, she woke up and saw him still waiting there. Seeing his dedication, she decided to give him warrior training. It's, um, uh, still a work in progress. It's cool hearing the backstories, to be honest. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you something. Oh. Have you ever heard of a talking flower? Yes. So you know all about it. The echo flower? They're all over the marsh. Say something to them, and they'll repeat it over and over. What about it? Well, Papyrus told me something interesting the other day. Sometimes, when no one else is around, a flower appears and whispers things to them. Flattery, advice, encouragement. Predictions. Weird, huh? Someone must be using an echo flower to play a trick on him. Keep an eye out, okay? Thanks. So it's flowy, basically. Well, that was a long break. I can't believe I let you pull me away from my work for that long. Oh, by the way, I'm flat broke. Can you foot the bill? It's just 10,000 cheap. No! Just kidding. Grillby, put it on my tab. It's interesting that Sans has a tab. I wonder why. By the way, I was going to say something, but I forgot. Aw. I want to talk to Grillby, he's cool. Right, Grillby said that your food is- Okay, yeah, Grillby is quiet, I forgot about that. Yeah, we're back in Snowden. We just have to walk back to the waterfall because Sans wouldn't take us back with us. Take, take us back with him. 
So, we're gonna head to the waterfall now, and we're just gonna continue on to the actual level. So, at different points in the game, you will get these little moments with Sans where you can talk to him, and you can kind of get to know his character. In this one, it's showing his devotion to his brother. It's also showing how Flowey has been talking to his brother, and if you go on the talk with him, it will allow you to become good friends with him, which is something you really want to do. Oh, didn't mean to, need to save. Okay. And... Let's hang out again sometime. So, now we're at the waterfall. This is a box. You can put an item in or take it out. Why would you, though? You can't use items when they're in the box. Sincerely, a box hater. Yeah, there are box haters in this world. It's depressing, I know. Is it here that- Huh? There's a camera behind the waterfall. There's an echo flower here. I swore I saw something behind that rushing water. Now, the cameras are gonna make sense because... As you find out at the end of Waterfall, you're actually being watched. It's kind of creepy, but at the same time, it's not that bad. Come through here, and you find a tutu lying on the ground. I'll take it. If you put it on, you can get more defense. Now, there is one little problem. You'll be finding a lot of items around the place, like, just kind of normal stuff. Uh... Like, uh, items and weapons and stuff. They are actually from the past fallen humans. You're the seventh fallen human to fall down. I think that's already been said, though. Also, that shadow effect is beautiful. And now we're gonna get a nice cutscene. Uh, hi, Undyne. I'm here with my daily report. Uh, regarding that human I called you about earlier. Huh? Did I fight them? Yes, of course I did. I fought them valiantly. What? Did, did I capture them? Well, no. I tried very hard on dying, but in the end, I... I failed. What? You're going to take the human soul yourself? But on dying, you don't have to destroy them. You see... You see... Uh, I understand. I'll help you in any way I can. Aww. Oh yeah, that's Undyne. Pretty intimidating, you know? And yeah, she can summon spears. She won't attack us now. Not unless we move again. So instead, she'll just retreat back into the darkness. Now, Undyne comes off as incredibly intimidating, and you know what? She is an intimidating, strong, independent woman. Oh, and the monster kid follows us. Yo, did you see that way she was staring at you? That was awesome! I'm so jealous! What'd you get to do to get her attention? <laughs> Come on, let's go watch her beat up some bad guys. Aw. He doesn't know that I'm a human, that's the sad part. I have noticed, by the way, that out of all the characters, Frisk is the only one that doesn't have a black kind of outline around him. Or her. Uh, not Frisk. I mean, I mean Billy, because uh, Billy Bo is who I called my character, right? Yeah, okay. A feeling of dread hangs over you, but you stay determined. Billy, waterfall hallway. Yeah. When the four bridge scenes align in the water, they will spout. Yeah, Frisk is the default character name for this main character, but obviously you can call it whatever, but I've been calling him Frisk for a while. But yeah, it's the default character name, that's all. So yeah, full bridge seeds will create a nice little bridge with flowers similar to Deku Sprout flowers from Zelda. Now, okay, who is it? Aaron! Aaron is fun, you have to flex with him. You flex, he flexes twice as hard. Flexing contest, okay, flex more. Aaron will always end his sentences in a winky face because he is freaking amazing and I want him to flex more, flex more. You flex harder. Nice, I won't lose though. <laughs> oh yeah, this is one of his attacks. He flexes. A lot. And if we flex again, he flexes himself out of the room. Bye, Aaron. Have fun. Now there is a secret in this area. If you get a bridge seed and you place it here, and you move them all across here, this is something I didn't even know about until legitimately just before I recorded this episode. Because I just wanted to make sure I was getting everything down. Because I've played through the game, obviously. I, I know what most of the endings are, but there are still a few secrets that I personally haven't seen. 
So, it's kind of interesting. But yeah, if you let the bridge seeds build here, you can come across here and you'll find a bench and an echo flower. I just wasn't ready for the responsibility. And here, there's a lone quiche sitting underneath this bench. Will you take it? Take it. You got the abandoned quiche. If you look at the abandoned quiche's info, abandoned quiche heals 34 HP, a psychologically damaged spinach egg pie. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Okay, let me just take a look at the, uh, the unicycle info. It's a single-pronged popsicle. Wait, that's just normal. Okay. Well, now we can create even more bridges. More bridges! And it has to be in an order of four petals. Otherwise, these flowers won't sprout. So you can't just put three here and expect them to sprout. It has to be all four. Hello, this is Papyrus. How did I get this number? It was easy. I just dialed every number sequentially until I got yours. Yeah. So, what are you wearing? I'm asking for a friend. She thought she saw you wearing a dusty tutu. Is that true? Are you wearing a dusty tutu? What will you say? No. So you aren't wearing a dusty tutu. Got it. You're my friend, so I trust you 100%. Have a nice day. Is there anything back here? No, just making sure. Yeah, Papyrus, you're annoying sometimes, but you're a great guy. A long time ago, monsters would whisper their wishes to the stars in the sky. If you hoped with all your heart, your wish could come true. Now, all we have are these sparkling stones on the ceiling. Wishing room. So yeah, the echo flowers in this area actually tell a nice story. It's kind of beautiful. Washua! Washua, you wanted to clean you. You ask Washua to clean you. It hops around excitedly. Tweet! Green means clean! Basically, you want to touch the green ones. Not like how badly I just did. That was horrible. Green means clean! Oh, I'm so bad at this. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ! Uh, can I spare you yet? Yes. Oh my god, I'm almost dead. Thousands of people wishing together can't be wrong. The king will prove that. Come on, sis, make a wish. A wish my sister and I will see the real stars someday. And then... Ah, seems my horoscope is the same as last week's. Okay, random. If you look in here, and you look for the telescope, you just need to find a light area, and it says check wall. It basically means go up here and click on the wall. And then you'll find a secret area. Now let me just quickly use a unicycle. Yum. Ancient writing covers the walls. You can just make out the words. The War of Humans and Monsters. So this is a big story. Why did the humans attack? Indeed, it seemed that they had nothing to fear. Humans were unbelievably strong. It would take the soul of nearly every monster just to equal the power of a single human soul. But humans have one weakness. Ironically, it is the strength of their soul. Its power allows it to persist outside the human body, even after death. If a monster defeats a human, they can take its soul. A monster with a human soul, a horrible beast with unfathomable power. It's an illustration of a strange creature. There's something very unsettling about this drawing. And now we get to head off in this direction. We're going to go and head to pretty much an interesting little section. See, whenever these little shadows appear, you kind of know something is going to happen. So we'll start walking, and then the moment Undyne appears, start moving. It's a mini-game, basically. Don't get hit by the spears, or you will get sent into a battle screen. Which is never fun. And then that happens, and there's a good chance you're gonna get killed. No one dying. I don't like you that much. Go away! Ah. Oh no. Ow. Keep running. Eventually, Undyne will give up. Basically, you just have to keep running. And once you get in here, Undyne will stop firing. Yeah, Undyne picks up the monster kid. It's pretty surprising. Sorry I had to go quiet there, guys, but 
My dog barked very loudly, and it's really interrupting the recording. Now if we walk out of here, the dinosaur kid will follow us, or the monster kid even. Although he is basically just a dinosaur. Yo, did you see that? Undyne just... TOUCHED ME! I'm never washing my face ever again. Man, are you unlucky? If you were standing just a little bit to the left... Yo, don't worry, I'm sure we'll see her again. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we'll see her again, because we want to see her again. Isn't there a save point after here? Yes, there is. This cheese has been here so, so long a magical crystal has grown around it. It's stuck to the table. Squeak! Squeak, 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 squeak! Well, knowing the mouse might one day extract the cheese from the mystical crystal, it fills you with determination. Save. So, this has been episode... Eight of Undertale, I'd like to say. If you enjoyed this episode, then feel free to leave a like, rate, comment, or even subscribe. And as always, guys, if you want to check out the other parts of the series, there is a link in the playlist down below, as well as a link to the last part and the next part in annotations in the top left and top right corner below, above even. And yeah, I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.